Resolution. 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 I'm sorry, I can't even I'll read. I'll <laughs> second. Okay, we have Tim's motion. We have Tom's second. Any discussion? Okay, Walter. Gary, the ordinance uh, in section 19.5. Yes, sir. Calls for any person violating shall be deemed guilty of a misdemeanor. Um, upon conviction, punish person to code. Uh, B, a violation may be reduced to an infraction payable by a fine. C, a complaint filed under provision of this chapter shall be filed within 180 days. What is, what is the effect of the, of the resolution that's before us should it not pass? And then the difference if it does pass, since the ordinance is, is now in place. Please. The, uh, the ordinance that was just passed, when it becomes effective, is, it describes the process, and the process is a criminal process. It starts with a misdemeanor violation, which can then be reduced uh, according to the conduct of the defendant. So it is a criminal process, a misdemeanor like all the other misdemeanors, uh, within the city code. And, and if I may? Please. What, what is the effect of the proposed resolution that's before us? It sets out the process by which it, it informs the public of what will happen in this case. Uh, it's a case where, again, the idea is to gain, um, to gain compliance with the ordinance, the anti-discrimination ordinance, uh, the main focus is not to prosecute unless the violator will not change his or her conduct. And what's the, what happens or what's the difference if the, if the resolution doesn't pass with the ordinance in place? Well, we will prosecute. We will move ahead with prosecuting it as a misdemeanor. However, again, this resolution sets out the purpose of the ordinance itself, and that is to get people not to engage in discriminatory conduct. So if you do not pass the resolution, we still have an ordinance. We will still prosecute as is, uh, as is designated by the ordinance. Sue, you chaired the administrative yeah. committee meeting, so and, and and could you speak we, to that, please? And when we discussed this, um, we um, didn't discuss the issue of whether the resolution would pass or not. But that this was a um, sort of a hybrid between criminal and private. In other words, it wasn't it wasn't going to be um, if there wasn't. It would be difficult for a person to privately, civilly sue someone for discrimination if discrimination wasn't illegal. So that's why one of the reasons why the ordinance was important, because if it's not illegal, you couldn't sue anybody or you could, they couldn't be prosecuted. There is no recourse. And we asked um, Mr. Fonts if, they had, if there were any cases, if there had ever been any cases. And he indicated that there had been some complaints to the commission, but they never took names, dates, information, because there was nothing that could be done. It wasn't illegal. Mm -hmm. So this was the best compromise between criminal. And it, it's, it's, it's kind of like the small fine for the, uh, and I hate, hate to take something very important and make it trivial and trivialize it, but it's kind of like, the the <coughs> fines for the um, false alarms are to change the behavior, uh, not to punish. And so the way this has been done is it starts out as criminal, but then it can go away and, and disappear. And, and that's what we wanted. We didn't want to beat somebody over the head. And there were um, definitely questions brought up about um, families in uh, uh, the um, exemption for families living in duplexes where your own family lives on one side and you can be exempted for the other side. Also, um, religious organizations. 
So there were some uh, protections for um, really the uh, freedom of religion and, and those rights that we felt were protected by the federal constitution. Mm -hmm. But we did ask the question, are there, are the federal, aren't the federal laws and the state of the laws, don't they cover this? And they didn't. So. I know Randy Fife worked long and hard on this. He reviewed um, the processes around the state of Idaho what, and other places as well, what has worked, what has not. And he actually sat in on that administrative mm -hmm. yes, committee did. meeting uh, just in case there were questions. And, uh, I, you know, I think he was confident this was the most helpful in terms of informing, educating, providing mediation opportunities, uh, as well as having enough teeth to make that would be defensible in, in a dispute. So I thought that was uh, val very valuable. Yes, Gary. Yeah, if I may. Um, Randy and I had a lot of discussions as to what was uh, the focus of this ordinance and what was the focus of this process. If you read the recitals in the resolution, you will, you, it will become uh, clear what the idea was, was to inform the public that this would be followed if the council passes this resolution. So they have full notice of how a, a case like this will proceed. Um, Mr. Nagy makes a good point. Uh, and that is, he's exactly right. Most of the federal rights are enforced through a civil cause of action. The federal government set, has set up penalties for uh, violations of those uh, statutes. They have uh, amounts that you can sue for, uh, so on and so forth. As Mr. Nagy also indicated, Randy had concerns whether constitutionally the city could create a civil cause of action. Um, I have not looked into it exhaustively, so I can give no opinion on that. I can tell you that the process by which this is proceeding in, criminal, in a criminal case allows the complaint to be, um, or the investigation to remain private and not open to public records or public scrutiny while a determination or a um, eradication of the violation, if you will, is being explored or a remedy of the violation. So um, agreeing with Ken's analysis, I mean, I, I can't argue with it, but uh, the city of Moscow is not the federal government. We, we did not, when Randy and I discussed it, we didn't put a penalties clause in that created the civil cause of action or say what you could sue for. Um, that's a whole different uh, remedy. This will, if it is applied correctly, and the ordinance has that, this just makes it more clear that the object is to gain compliance, not to uh, convict someone of a misdemeanor. The defendant has it within their power. If they will change their conduct to conform with the ordinance, then it can either be reduced to a small civil penalty or it can, in fact, be dismissed. Okay, Tom? I, I'm supportive of it because I, I see it as a positive way to... Um, help us work through the whatever problems might um, exist and help people to communicate and improve communication, improve education and um, remove, um, you know, crim criminal punishment. Um, there is a typo in the box there. It says, uh, if mediation declined, complaint and report are sent, <laughs> not send. But I think that's the only... I saw that. My statement. only suggestion for changing it. Mm -hmm. Walter? So, Gary, back to my original question and, and your uh, just finished explanation. The resolution makes, sets forth a policy that would lead to a less onerous outcome should things go in the best possible way than just the ordinance alone would as it's written. Yes. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion and we have a second. We'll start the roll call vote with you, Dan. Aye. 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 Okay, that motion carries. That'll be resolution 2013-2. Uh, two. Two. 
Uh, so for those in the audience tonight, the City Council has made a significant statement by its passage of this ordinance. And I would uh, emphasize that the procedural folly, the fact that the Council chose not to hear from you one, uh, as individuals should not trivialize the impact of their decision this evening. I'm very proud of our City of Moscow for being Idaho's only inclusive community. I'm very proud of the citizens who who communicated with the council and me on this issue of such importance. So thank you all for your good work on that. Our next Madam agenda Mayor. item tonight is the Madam citizen Mayor. survey report presented Madam by Mayor. Jen Piffner. Point of order. Jen Piffner. Madam Mayor. Uh, we've gone to the point, next point, agenda point, item, Walter. Point of order. Point of order, please. Yes, Walter. Thank you, ma'am. To my memory, Dan's motion did not preclude public comment. It did not preclude Gary's explanation. I'm sorry, this if is I, not a I point may. of order. That's not procedural, it, it Walter. Is. Not it really. is. Not really. I, I, I just would, I don't like the, the council being painted as having cut off public comment. You rushed it. Once the motion and second were made, I felt that you rushed it through to a vote where you hard, you don't ever do that. So I didn't, I don't know that Dan would have, would have, included a motion that would have stopped Gary. In fact, three or four of us wanted to hear from Gary. Um, and we did. And only on the resolution. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make you. that point. Jen, please. Thank you. 